Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear of you? Prepare a full account for your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do. When I was removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called his steward, his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another, he, the steward said, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said to him, here is your promissory note. Write one for 80. And the master commended this dishonored steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. I tell you, my friends, make yourselves, I tell you, make friends for yourself with the dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into the eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. The person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can trust can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Cal Ripken was a star infielder for the Baltimore Orioles. He holds the record for most consecutive games played at 2,632 games. And that means that over a span of nearly 16 years, he did not miss a single game. A large number of celebrities, including the President of the United States, were on hand to celebrate the event. When the record became official in the fifth inning of the game, an incredible celebration broke out. For 22 minutes, the fans at Camden Yards applauded and celebrated. Midway through the applause, the usually reserved Ripken began jogging around the stadium, touching the hands of the fans as he passed. And all this time, the TV announcers for ESPN were silent, letting the camera tell the story. And still more amazing, Games around the United States stopped as fans in stadiums as far away as California stood and applauded. Author James Bassick observed that no baseball record, including Hank Aaron's breaking of Babe Ruth's lifetime home run record, generated such national enthusiasm. 
This raises a question. What caused the nation to get so excited about Ripken and his record? Bassick suggests three reasons. First, Ripken was a model of commitment to his profession. He approached baseball with the dedication of a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. He went to the ballpark early to prepare himself mentally and physically. After the game, he left the park late because he obliged the many fans who, who were waiting in line for his autograph. Second, Ripken was a model of commitment to his family. He spent a lot of quality time with his family and would drive his kids to school daily, even on game days. And finally, he was a model of commitment to Baltimore and its fans. And here's what Bassick writes. After becoming a star, he had opportunities to become a free agent and sign, other uh, sign with other teams for more money. But he chose to remain in Baltimore. Over the years, he has expressed his commitment to Baltimore by raising and donating hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to local charities. Ripken, Ripken's commitment to baseball brings to mind St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where he, where he exhorts us to imitate the commit, commitment of dedicated athletes, saying, that is why I run straight for the finish line, to keep myself from being disqualified after having called others to the contest. And this brings us to today's gospel. There, Jesus takes up the whole question of Christian commitment and service. He ends with this surprising statement. No servant can be the slave of two masters. Such a slave will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. In other words, Jesus is saying that when the chips are down, our priority has to go to one or the other. It can never be shared. We cannot choose both. The homily at all the masses this weekend is being directed toward the theme of stewardship. In today's gospel, Jesus praises the unjust steward, not for his dishonesty, but for his cleverness. The steward used his imagination, his talent, and the power that he had to, get, to guarantee his security after he loses his job. And Jesus comments, the children of this world are more clever in dealing with their own kind than are the children of light. The words of Jesus are a challenge to each one of us. We are called to be the children of light. We are the children of light. But we are called to act with the cleverness of the steward in today's gospel. How do we, by cleverly using the gifts at our disposal, work to build up the kingdom of light? We have at our disposal a couple of wonderful tools that are gifts from God. Each of us has time. Each of us has 24 hours a day. Each of us has various gifts and talents, our intelligence, our imagination, and many other personal gifts. 
These are gifts that have been given to us by God for the service of other people, the same way that Cal Ripken used his gifts to serve his work, his family, and his community, so we are called to do the same. For each of us, there is a kind of built-in stewardship connected with our vocations in life. We're spouses, we're parents, we're children, we're gra grandparents. And so there are countless ways that we are stewards to our families as we live out our vocation. Along the same lines, there are many other things that we do as part of our job or our occupation. These two are acts of service and stewardship. For most of us, these two areas take up most of our time. But when we look at our time availability, we may find that there are other things that we could be doing as volunteer service to others. We benefit from the volunteer stewardship service of other people. Maybe we should also look at being stewards to those who are beyond our family and our occupation. There are things in our parish, service to St. Vincent de Paul, being lectors or ushers or, or Eucharistic ministers here at our Sunday liturgy. We could be ministers to the sick and the homebound and there are countless other ministries available through the parish. But there are also opportunities in the, lo in the larger community, serving as, as a big brother or big sister, Habitat for Humanity, hospital volunteers, service to the homeless. The Prescott Daily Courier regularly has announcements about volunteer services that are needed and available. Of course, each one of us has to take into account our age, our health, our energy level, time availability, and so on before we make a commitment. It does take a bit of a risk to make the phone call, to, make, to ask the question of someone who can give us straight answers, and finally, to give it a try. But people who are already doing volunteer stewardship service will tell you, it was the best thing I ever did. It is the best thing that ever happened to me. It changed my life and my whole perspective. I really began a new life. I don't know why it took me so long and I wouldn't give it up for anything. We've come here together this morning as a community to hear the word of the Lord and be nourished at the table of the Lord. We've come together as a community to support one another. And so we pray, Lord, open our ears to your word, even when it challenges us more then we want to be challenged. Lord, open our minds to your word even when it disturbs us more than we want to be disturbed. Lord, help us to live your word even when it means changing our lives more than we want to change them. Lord, help us to serve as you deserve to be served.